<laughs> hello, hello. This is my video recap of 2015 and what's in store for 2016. Hang tight because there's gonna be a lot of numbers thrown. I have my iPad here because I took a ton of notes. I probably should have done this content, but I did this vi on, on video on purpose and I'll tell you why later. And at the end, I'm gonna tell you my three biggest learnings from this year. Three big things that you can do yourself and you should do now that um, I learned the hard way. Well the fun way I like to call it. So let, let's just jump into things. So this year I like to talk in threes and odd numbers as statistically speaking that's a, a way to for people to better memorize it. So the three things, my three goals, the three things that I started this year with or last year with 2015 with uh, I, I achieved They're my goals. First and foremost it was to be everywhere. What the heck does that mean? I mean literally be everywhere and I was judging the success of be everywhere based off how many people talked to me and said I'm everywhere. And I could tell you that after I warmed up to a few people or they warmed up to me after all these conversations, um, they, they said, dude, you are everywhere. How are you doing it? And I'll tell you how a little later or tell you even where I was a little later. Um, the next thing is I wanted to connect with and help 365 people. That's one a day and I connected with 368 people, a lot of which I helped, some of which they helped me, and again, more on that later, but the great thing is, out of those 368 people, I made 21 new great friends. I'm talking about I can call them on the cell phone if I go to jail, that's a great friend, and I have 21 new friends thanks to the connection of 368. Of the 368, three of them I started companies with, and that was crazy. I didn't even anticipate that happening, but it was amazing, uh, amazing turnout that just by just putting myself out there, I ended up getting these things. So the last one is I pushed my limits. I pushed my limits further than I ever thought. Uh, I've been doing this, I've been in a professional in the internet marketing space for over 12 years now, and I could tell you I worked the hardest I probably did this year, probably harder than the, the three years combined before. I worked an average of 80 hours a week, and I'm talking about like solid freaking hours. Typing, I, I, have, <laughs> I have all these pictures of me at five o'clock in the morning. What that really is is just pictures of darkness. There, you can't see anything at five o'clock in the morning, no matter what time of the year. So let's just jump into it. So first and foremost, uh, my biggest kind of takeaway or win for this year is I discovered Slack, Slack groups. I'm in about 20 plus Slack groups and because of that I have access to some of the most badass people ever. And I can with a single message connect with pretty much all the who's who's and get any answer and uh, any question answered or anything of that nature just ping them really instantly. It's awesome. Uh, I'll post a few links on the bottom of this video here that you can join but most of these groups are private. So if you want to get in on some of these Slack groups, please do message me. In fact, uh, I'll tell you about how I'm going to measure the engagement of my videos later. And I'll tell you even why I'm doing videos in the first place versus a, a meaty blog post that my, is my normal style. So the next thing up here is when I work. When I work is my company, well, is a company I work for. I'm the VP of marketing there. And one of our biggest successes last year was we grew our blog to 500,000 monthly visitors. It was awesome. Not only that, we grew our monthly new leads or trials to 14,000 plus, and we figured out ways to even grow that further, and that's gonna come this year, so it's gonna be awesome. We also hacked PR, so for the longest time, uh, for people that don't know what When I Work is, it's a scheduling software for the hourly workforce, so restaurants, retail, if you work an hourly job, you probably know uh, going to the break room and whatnot, but the, the point is, it's not sexy. It is a big problem that affects 60% of the US workforce, but it's not sexy. PR doesn't want to talk about it. We hacked PR, and as a result of this, we get, a, we get 100 plus mentions a month. That is freaking amazing, given that in the end of 2014, we couldn't get even any journalists to pick up our phone calls. Not that they would pick up phones, but Figuratively speaking, we couldn't get anybody to even give a crap about us, so it's awesome. And then we created an online community of a, a very active group. This is something we pulled together in like four weeks, but we have over 250 plus members and about a dozen or so growing every day um, with with activity of two times a day. And that's not 
that's not amazing results, but it's amazing to pull off in such a short period of time and how engaging our community is of our 500,000 visitors and our 14,000 customers. Uh, it's amazing to kind of pull this off in a few weeks. So at least I'm personally amazed of how active our customers are as long as we gave them that avenue. All right, the next thing, I'm sure everyone here is gonna be dying to hear about some of these some of these projects. So first and foremost, 100 Days of Growth. That's my ebook I launched in January 15th um, in 2015 sold over 23,000 copies, sell about 14 copies a day, and um, I'll, I'll share a link to how much money I made from it, and I'll give you a little spoiler. It's $342,000 last year from s selling eBooks, not only from eBook sales, but my presentation is below for you to check it out. The next up is Content Marketer IO. That was a company I started with one of the guys I've helped um, in February of last year, which is awesome. We have over 174 customers, with 500 plus leads a month, which is all coming from content marketing. So our whole marketing strategy is actually content marketing, the very thing we help companies do. So it's kind of meta, but it's awesome to see uh, 500 plus leads come in, people trying to, trying to leverage Content Marketer. And we're growing pretty rapidly, very happy with the results so far for the last seven months now. Narrow.io, another tool I launched last year, has over a thousand customers and 70% of our business comes from word of mouth. <laughs> and frankly, like word of mouth just started happening before we even did anything. And the other 30% comes from content marketing. So we, our, our marketing budgets on both companies are next to zero. In fact, the biggest cost is my time. And we have a marketing admin, a growth strategist, two people that are kind of part-time at the companies helping us do a lot of the operations for these all the content that I personally produce as well as kind of the network. So it's been awesome seeing these two companies grow, something that my co-founders and I both started out of essentially uh, an idea or actually a pain point that I personally had at when I work. So it's cool because Content Marketer, I already replaced a whole headcount. So it saved me actually $40,000 or higher a year because I was gonna try to find all these email addresses and whatnot. But, but anyways, more on that later. So the next thing is we also launched Notifier, an app from, a free app from Content Marketer. Um, it's, it's gotten over 500 users and people are actively using it every day. It was our lead gen mechanism for Content Marketer IO. It was essentially something you can do free right now, instantly, and get instant gratification and get a win. And we wanted to make it completely free to get people used to promoting content, which is what we're advocating at Content Marketer IO. The next up is my personal site, sujinpatel.com. Kind of feels weird saying my own name. <laughs> I don't know if anyone here feels that way when you say your own website. But um, crazy thing is we generated 98 leads in 2015. I threw up a consulting page because um, I figured we'd, um, we'd start into the consulting world. And uh, of the 98 leads, I close seven of them. I got seven uh, consulting engagements. Uh, the revenue from that was $198,000. And that's in my presentation on the 100 days of growth. In fact, the book is what led me to do these consulting in the first place. But it was an awesome, awesome experience. The other thing is uh, I referred out 90, 19 leads to my trusted network. And my trusted network essentially is people or companies I've personally vetted out, worked with in the past, I trust and I sell them my leads or I give it to them or I get some sort of commission. Now, the people I refer, they know exactly what they're getting into, that they're, they're connecting with me because they want somebody good, proven, and of that, we sold $1.05 million in leads, and that to me is a very, very, very impressive goal because what I did as a byproduct of my personal brand and sujanpatel.com and just blogging every, every week and well, actually every day, I, I do that about six times a week. I, <laughs> I built a lead funnel of $1.05 million. That's how many of the, of the 98 leads, 19 were closed by my referral network. And um, those guys closed $1.05 million in leads. That's amazing because in those last two years of personal brand, I did that and a, as a byproduct. I wasn't even trying to sell consulting. To put it in perspective, the first four years of my previous agency, it took me that long, four freaking years, full time. And my job was to build in leads, to do SEO, but essentially to build a lead funnel, to build a business. It took me four years to build that exact same lead flow. Um, so very, very, I'm very happy with that accomplishment because 
it shows that people are willing to trust me and they're putting their money with their mouth as in a million bucks where their mouth is or they're putting their million bucks in me so that's awesome I also started a private dinner uh, called growth chat I did it all around the world I spoke at a lot of conferences but more on that later but it's awesome I connected with over a hundred people in the last year and 50 of us the fifth of the 100 people, 50 of us communicate on a daily basis on our Slack groups and email and whatnot. So it's awesome to be connected with such awesome people. That was my network and, and some of my really good friends too. So it's cool. Now, humble brag, my personal branding outside of the other things. Um, so I'm going to split out a bunch of numbers. So, so stay, stay with me here. I was mentioned 496 times in 2015, whether quoted, my, con- my personal website, my content was mentioned, not my companies, just me. Awesome. I was not expecting that, but I guess that's what happens when you really put out good content. You put a lot of effort into it on educating the customer base. I, again, I connected with two, 368 people in 2015, and it was awesome because 78 of those 368 people took my advice and they emailed me about it. I think more people probably took the advice. I don't know, but I know 78 people did. And some people started companies. Some people got uh, got their own press from some of the articles of like, how I hacked press. Some people uh, built their lead funnel and, and so on and so forth. And I got 78 people thanking me, which is so like, that's what helps me sleep at night. Not the gratification, but the fact that 78 people actually took my advice and that's, uh, again, very, very uh, humbling for me. The uh, three people that I worked with or, help, or connected with, I started companies with. Um, so one is Nero, content marketer. You probably know about those two. The other one is Q, Q-U-U.co. It's a, it's a tool for uh, filling up your curation of your social media feed and more on that later. And then I had 20 plus aha moments. So I didn't help every single one of those people. Sometimes I asked for help. And of those 368 calls, I had 20, at least 20 aha moments. And when I say aha, I mean like, holy crap, it like lit a bulb in my head and I, I changed directions or I, I found this like, like the, the one thing at that time that was missing or that one key ingredient or maybe it was just a, an idea or epiphany and it was awesome, 20 plus. Uh, the, the, the next thing is I was on TV, MSNBC in New York. It was awesome. It, it all came from an article I wrote on Snapchat and how small businesses can leverage Snapchat. So that was very flattering. Again, it came from inbound. I, I also, um, in 2015, wrote 250 plus blog posts. I pretty much stopped counting in November of 2015 because it was more work than it was worth. And so I'm going to just call it 250 plus pieces of content and I write about six times a day or sorry that's a lot six times a week every evening and then about three three hours on Sunday I became a public speaker which was which is something I've been afraid to do to be honest I've done a couple public speaking gigs but I've never pursued it because two reasons one I was afraid of rejection I was like the fear of rejection I was like I don't want to get rejected all my peers speak at conferences and I just didn't want to get rejected so I never even tried the second thing is I'm scared to death of public speaking <laughs> and I freaking just conquered it I was like screw this I'm gonna freaking do it and it was no big deal I uh, after I did a couple of them I actually keynoted a my, my biggest highlight of, of, of any of the speaking engagements was in Brazil. I was invited to speak at RD Summit in Brazil and keynoted uh, an opening keynote of, in front of 3,200 people, which was awesome to see. It was crazy because I couldn't even see past like the first few hundred people. And I was like, holy crap, this thing goes on forever. And I eventually saw the video of me presenting. I thought I did a horrible job. Turns out I, pretty, I did a pretty decent job. Obviously, it's a work in progress, but I plan to do a lot more of those in 2016. All right, so of that and the crazy thing is i i growth hacked or i hacked my way to get a 17 percent engagement rate of the audience so while i sp- i measured my success of the presentation of the how i did based off the engagement rate and engagement rate to me is do they tweet at me do they email me did they did they um did they take pictures um and or as shared at least and anything like that, did they download my book? Because every one of these presentations, my 100 Days of Growth was, was for sale or I, I gave a ridiculously low offer. It was a dollar, I think, or less. And, uh, and I got 17% engagement. That was, my, that was my presentation in Brazil. 
and I worked my way up to about 23%. So it was awesome to see, I don't know if that's high or low, I've, I don't know if anyone ever actually measures this stuff, but I do. And to me it was awesome to see a 5% increase. And, and I remember at a few conferences, I got over 100 sales before I walked off stage. And so it was awesome to see like the trust immediately happen from my content, my presentation, something I did, maybe it was all of it together, that um, got 150 people to, to purchase my book while I was on stage, that 45 minute break, that 45 minute time frame. The other thing is I was on 38 podcast interviews, which is awesome. It was very time consuming. I pretty much did one a day and my favorite one is Mixergy and that's going to happen, um, I think, uh, in a few weeks now. So stay tuned for that link it, and there's a really interesting backstory on that one. So Andrew Warner, thank you for, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I traveled an average of 2.7 times a week for an average of three days for my travel. So I did a ton of traveling. I pretty much had no home. I would come home, spend some days with my wife, and then go back out again. It was very, very, it beat me up. I remember I went to Brazil was for like four days. It was a 30 hour flight journey on the way home, a 30 hour journey. I got sick, I was sick for two days. So if you're thinking this glamorous life of being a world traveler, um, it's tough. It's really, really tough. Again, I went to seven countries, nine states. Really cool. Went to Minnesota a lot as when I work is based there. I also went to San Francisco and, and New York a few times. I did like four or five day trips to New York, which is exhausting in its own if you've ever been in traffic to and from the airport alone. Uh, I settled down in Austin, which is really, really cool. I love this place. It's, it's, I consider it my home. I've been here seven, eight months although probably seven, eight weeks actually being in Austin. And it was cool because my wife and I, we've never lived in anything bigger than a thousand square feet. Growing up in, in, in Southern California and spending most of our adult lives in San Francisco, it's expensive and, 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 and thousand square feet is hard to come across. So it's, it kind of feels like our little mansion here is awesome. And, and the crazy thing is we've lived in nine cities and 12 apartments over 10 years and this is actually feels like home. So it's good to settle down. We don't plan on moving. Austin's gonna be our home for at least the foreseeable future. And uh, yeah, the, the personal thing I wanna tell you about, one good and one really, really bad. So those of you who know me, in 2011, I, gained, I lost a bunch of weight. This is the bad, well, leading to the bad. In 2011, I lost a bunch of weight. I, I lost 42 pounds. I changed my life around and I actually built for the last five years a very, very healthy lifestyle and I've been consistently doing it except for 2015. I busted my butt, I lost track and I gained 17 pounds. In the beginning of the year, I did something amazing. I was able to work out two and a half, time, two and a half hours a day, four days a week. I was doing boxing at 5 a.m. in the morning, kickboxing at night with some weightlifting in the middle. But Somehow February came around, I started Content Marketer, I got busy at work, I insert many of these excuses. As you can see, I kept myself pretty busy, but nonetheless, I lost, I lost this core piece of me and it still eats at me. It's like this guilty conscious that I can't, I know I'm eating unhealthy, I know I'm doing wrong, but I just like can't break that habit. I'm going to freaking break that this year. But that was the bad news and I guarantee whether I die doing this, I am going to freaking do that. Now they're good. They're good. This is a little, another humble brag here. Um, I, my dreams came true. So uh, as a kid, as a kid, I, uh, I loved cars. I, I, I was this, you know, my, my parents were poor. We, we came to America with all of our money. I was three years old and uh, I never really thought of having a really luxurious life. I just wanted a modest life. I wanted to have a good life. There's no really monetary value in that. And uh, I loved cars. As a kid, I loved cars. My dream was a Porsche 911. Uh, when Single Grain hit a million in revenue, uh, or first million bucks in 2012, I bought, a, I bought a Porsche 911. My dreams came true. Well, the next thing as a kid uh, was, was uh, to have a car with the doors open up. Like I, I saw these Lamborghinis and, and on TV or in person at, car, at the Monterey car show and these doors opened up. Like they just lit up my eyes. As a little kid, I'm like, holy crap, these doors are just opening up. It's awesome. So I bought a car with the doors that open up. Forget the vanity. Like I get, you know, like I don't even care about showing off. I just care about this little 10 year old kid being with his eyes lit up. Every time the doors open up, the 10 year old kid, I look back to my 21 year old, 21 years ago myself and I'm like, holy crap, 
this kid's happy and I'm happy. Every time that door opens up and I get out of the car, it's freaking amazing uh, because I see see that thing. And again, it's, it's awesome to see, be able to have my dreams come true. So, all right, that's enough about 2015. I'm going to jump through 2016 because it's very, very important to me. I did a lot of stuff and I want to really regain my my life back so first and foremost i'm gonna do a lot less work i I did a lot work and i'm gonna continue to work hard but i'm gonna have a lot more fun the amount of planes i jumped out in 2015 was zero i'm gonna jump out at least 200 times this year i've already it is a few weeks into 2016 so i've already jumped out about 15 or so so i already got a leg up in 2015 and i plan to have a lot more fun this year more fun more racetracks, more speed, jumping out of planes, doing dumb stuff that can break some bones. Because after all, I've, I'm a thrill seeker, I'm an adrenaline junkie, and that's what really makes me happy. Um, I'm also looking to refine my replacement at whenIwork.com. Since moving to Austin and, um, and, and starting two other companies, it's been very hard to, to have a full-time job. I've, you know, I've been very brutally honest with our CEO, Chad, and uh, he and I are working through this. So I'm in the middle of, uh, of interviewing my replacement, which is, I don't know if you ever anyone has ever done that, but finding somebody with all your strengths and none of your weaknesses is a very interesting thing. So expect a blog post about how I found my replacement as a VP of marketing. But it's been great, still gonna be a part of the team, still an investor, and uh, still wanna see them succeed more than ever. And uh, I've already interviewed probably a few hundred candidates that unfortunately have not passed the the bar, but I hope soon too, so I can focus on content marketer and narrow. The next thing is I'm gonna invest in even more content because content got me on TV, got me on radio, got me public speaking, got me a million bucks in lead, a deal flow, um, 198K in leads. I plan to do more of that because it worked. I'm gonna do two million, double down, triple down, whatnot. I plan to help more people, and uh, one of the one of the 368 people I helped last year started Q. It all started with a, like a, a phone call, like, "Hey, let me help you. You have a problem trying to build this idea. Let me help you. What do you need?" I just kind of broke down some barriers. And to be honest, Daniel, if you're listening, I didn't think you were gonna build it, but you did, and I loved it. So I I, I checked it out because I gave the guy advice. I set it up. I forgot about it for a few weeks or a few months, and I was like holy crap, why is my Twitter engagement, why is my content, my shares getting so high? And I'm like, I couldn't figure out what it was. I didn't do anything. I finally traced it back to Q. Again, Q-U-U-U.co. And uh, I was like, holy crap. I instantly became a customer and doubled down in that. And I was like, I reached out and said, hey, how can I get involved? So it was awesome. I'm now, I'm, I'm now going to be involved as, as a marketing advisor and gonna, I want to help them grow further. Again, I'm going to do a lot less work. I want to connect with more people with no freaking agenda. Screw it, you need help, contact me. Don't be a jackass and ask a broad question like how do I grow my company? Tell me some details. In fact, I'm gonna do another video on how to ask for advice because too many people suck at it. And you don't wanna ask freaking Mark Cuban a dumb question. You wanna ask him the best freaking question, the one you've been holding on to for a long, long time or a very specific one. I'm gonna do a lot more speaking engagements. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have about the next six months lined up of speaking engagements. I'm going to Australia doing a few workshops and um, I plan to do a lot more of that. And the, the last thing is, or actually two more things, um, contentmarketer.io is launching an online course in a few weeks, or actually no, a few months. And workshops and education, I wanna pretty much teach everything I know. Like everything I've learned the hard way, aka the fun way, uh, I'm gonna teach it all. I'm just gonna give it all. I've already taught it to five students so far, one-on-one, and I plan to teach this to 50 students. So if you're interested, please email me. I'm not not selling it or I'm not doing anything just yet, but I want to make sure the the right people get involved and there's going to be an application process so not just anyone can join because this it has to be right for you, right? I know a lot of people can leverage content marketing, but not everybody. So that's that. And version 2 of 100 days of growth is coming out this year, this later this year. So is a Portuguese version of Content Marketing Playbook because there's a huge startup culture in Brazil that I didn't know of until I went there and they all are hopefully buy my book and whatnot. But I'm partnering up with Rock Content. Uh, if you haven't heard of them, check them out. 
to, to release the book. So that's that. Now I'm going to leave you with three really big kind of epiphanies, takeaways, things. Again, I learned the very, very hard way, the fun way um, that I think you can, you can leverage right now. So first and for, first and foremost, leverage content marketing right now because it is the cheapest way to build your brand, to build authority, to build traffic, to build SEO, to build your lead funnel. That's five freaking ways you can do it right now. Don't just put out content, learn it right, do it, learn it and do it right. And, um, but do it now because content marketing is just going up and to the right, meaning that way and it's just gonna keep growing and you're gonna keep leveraging it. You can continue to leverage it. Might as well write it up instead of down. Um, number two, is action over talking. Do over say. Why? Because you can validate the crap out of an idea. You can you could talk about this major plan, but just go freaking do it. Like it's not that hard. If you just take the barriers of why you can't do it off and you simplify the action to one, two, three, four, five steps, it's not that hard. Just freaking do it. If I can run two startups and have a full-time job and write six pieces of content, you should be able to freaking pursue whatever endeavor you have at least 10%, 20%, 30%, and then just keep iterating off of that. And the last thing that is my 2014 goal that I'm gonna move over to 2016 is build your 1,000 raving fans. Pat Flynn has a really Good article about this. He did a great presentation that converted earlier this year by Lead Pages, and um, he he said talked about building a thousand raving fans. So my hopes is to build a thousand raving fans. I've connected with them people and hoping to build raving fans through my dinners, through my blog, through helping people and connecting with them on on the phone or whatnot, through speaking engagements, whatnot. But I want to build a thousand raving fans thousand people maybe I have touched or impacted positively in their life that um, that hopefully um, that I can do so so anyways that's my that's my three takeaways again do content marketing right now do versus say execute right now fail who cares I'd rather you see you fail than just continue to hear you talk about it that's the worst thing ever talking for two years and not doing I, I know a few people listening or watching I know it's resonating well with you. And the last thing is build your thousand rating fans. I'm gonna be doing a ton more video with short tips. They're gonna be five minute tips. And I'm actually looking for advice or feedback on names. So if you've listened to this rant for my 2015 and 2016 kind of year end recap and what's ahead, please give me feedback. It's five minute talks on, on a very specific question uh, around marketing, again, uh, management, entrepreneurship, whatever I've learned the fun way. All right, guys, thank you for listening or thank you for watching. I, I hope to hear from you in the comments, in email, and connect with you on Slack if you guys are on my Slack groups. And uh, hopefully you have a great, great 2016. Thanks. <laughs>